Hello, I'm Katherine Heitman, uh, Communications Director of Louisiana Department of Children and Family Services, and I have the pleasure today of speaking with Katie McElvin, Director of Louisiana Fosters. Hi, Katie. Hi. So great to sit down and talk with you. Oh, I'm Get to turn the tables because you've been speaking with our some wonderful partners yeah. and learning all about them, mm. and now we get to talk with you. Yeah. Learn more about you and everything that's going on at Louisiana Fosters. I'm excited to be here. Oh, excited to tell y'all what we're doing. I know, I know. And so much has gone on at yes. Louis. It, the the, uh, the uh, program has just grown and grown. It has. It has. My goodness, trying to keep up with it all. That is that is the um, that's the the thing that we have to all the things that are going on and all the ideas that come through our table. Um, just being able to implement them with integrity and just making sure that we reach the people that need to be reached. So many yeah. people to be reached and so many, so many great people out there, so many great people out there and partners working on it. And that's, Yo, what's, yeah. that's what's exciting. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so how did you, how did you get to, get to this point? What was your path to Louisiana Fosters? Um, it's a little, it's a little bit here and there, but, um, I started, I got my um, undergraduate degree in organizational communications, and I immediately went into um, grad school to get my master's in counseling. And I used that, and I worked in the school system for five years. And during that time, I mean, I became really connected with um, the population, foster care population, but also the population that, of those kids that just needed help. And so um, after five years, I transitioned um, into being home with my kids. And it gave me a platform to be able to um, advocate on a different level because I had a little more time and I had a little more freedom to be able to, um, to advocate and to work um, on a state level. Um, I'd met people through my job and I'd um, talked to people through um, organizations that I was um, interested in. And um, one of those organizations was Rural Family Kids Camp. My friend, she was a mental health provider for that camp for many years and she moved um, to California. And so I, she, at her recommendation, and um, I stepped into that role last year. And it just changed my heart about foster care. I mean, I, I had already, um, the population was just so heavy on my heart to work with them. Um, and I worked with foster care children coming into our, in and out of our school system. I worked with a pre-K through second grade population. So we had several um, of several incidences where, you know, I worked closely with DCFS. And so I knew the needs were there were great. But this gave me one on one um, to this it, to be able to to love these kids one on one. Um, and just to back it up a little bit, I, I kind of get ahead of myself. After, um, when I was working the school system, I found out about TBRI, which, I mean, we've heard a little bit about, we've heard a lot actually about TBRI and what it does, um, what it was created for, for connection with our children and to help heal through connection and through relationships. And that's when I was sold. When I learned about TBRI and the hope that it offers kids and the hope that it offers families and that restoration that happens when good connections are made. You know, um, we, those disconnects happen at early ages and, you know, being my background in mental health, I understand the developmental cycle and I understand what happens in the brain when, um, when trauma happens, those, all that sciencey stuff I just loved because it gave me an, a deeper understanding of what actually happens to these babies, like what happens to these kids that go through trauma. And so I just connected with it on such a deep level. Didn't know what I was going to do with it. I just knew <laughs> I was supposed to do it. Um, and so I got to put that to use when I was the mental health professional at this camp. Um, and it was just such a beautiful experience. And, um, you know, all the emotions can be felt by all the kids and all everybody. There's just so much hope there. Um, but there's always that pain and mm. to be able to be equipped to meet those, meet that pain where it is and not run away from it is just what I feel like the Lord just has called me to. And so through that, I, um, I had been to the summits with the first lady. I'd been to a couple previous to that through trauma and TBRI and, um, 
And the last one that I went to, I was offered the position of Louisiana Foster's director, um, which I didn't know what it really entailed. I just knew it was a big yes. You know, I just knew I had to say yes because I, I knew the heart of the first lady and what she stood for and what she loved. And I just knew I wanted to lock arms with that and move it forward. So that's kind of how I got to that point. So interesting that you got in. You got in through Royal Family Kids Camp. Isn't it often that way that just, you know, it's, it's a connection like that. It's a friend mm -hmm. that opens a door that way. Right. And, you know, the, um, the, talking about connections, the reason why I even did TBR is because a judge that worked in our school um, system that worked closely with those families advocated for that for me. She called me and she's like, I really think I know her from family stuff, but she, she advocated. She said, you need this training. You need to understand what we, what we're dealing with. And mm -hmm. it just flipped the script. But through those connections all the way through, um, and just really pursuing what I know needs to be done. That's, I mean, you just have to be true to what you know your calling is. Well, that has come up again and again, mm -hmm. um, trauma-based uh, care. It's come up again and again in the conversations mm -hmm. and comes up more and more and more. Right. So um, a, a lot of the partners, Louisiana Foster's partners, I know are involved in that and yeah. encouraging more foster parents to get involved. Absolutely. So the first lady reached out her hand to you and said, um, help us out with this, become a part of this, you know, direct Louisiana Fosters. How did that feel? It was a, it was a, it, it's hard to explain it because I had seen all these things happen that I couldn't explain anyways. But when she asked me, um, I remember saying yes right away and then calling my husband and being like, maybe I should call him before I accept a job since I'm home with the kids. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I should probably include him in this decision. He's like, and he was so encouraging. He's like, yeah, if you want to do this. And so I remember after I said that, yes, I was walking through my house that evening and I was just like, isn't it funny how my background is in counseling, but it's also in organizational communication. Yeah. And I just felt like the Lord was like, I don't waste anything. Yes. And it was, it was in that moment that I realized like my undergraduate degree, my graduate degree, everything that I had been through working in the school system, getting um, trained for TBRI, working with Royal Family Kids, Kids Camp, all added up to this yeah. moment. Yeah. And it was just this full circle moment that I never saw coming. And I was, just, I was just so thankful to be, be asked and be a part of it. <laughs> and I, I, from what everything that I've, I've seen and, and experienced, um, there were always ideas, right? Oh, in your, yes. You have a very small organization. How many, how many of you work at Louisiana Fosters and with the First Lady? So just with us, because it's not, uh, it, we have people who are inputting this with DCFS. You, you know that y'all are such a big help. But with <laughs> us, it's the First Lady, um, it's our Delery who's over me, and it's myself. And so it's us with the ideas, but we could not do this without the reach of you guys and everybody who just believes in this cause. And But you're right. Every time we get together, um, we have like these brainstorming meetings, um, our staff meetings, they usually turn into it and they, they start with like, what if, you know, what if we could do this and then we end up feeding off of each other and the energy that we have just to help restore children um, is is electric and it moves every time we leave those meetings there's um, 40 other projects that we're excited about starting and doing and I mean it's just been a really cool process to see much different than um, what I thought that the job was going to be. I know that that what if that that um, the, all of those creative that creative spirit and energy mm -hmm. there is is what our secretary enjoys very much about working with the first lady yeah. and with Louisiana Fosters too. It's always the the idea of possibility, right? And what, what we can do, and we're doing things that we have never, you know, we only dreamed about before, mm -hmm. and it's very very exciting. So one of those is about working with churches, right. and the idea about working with churches. So right. t give us give us some sense. I mean, you this is something that you you come from. Um, this is something that should be kind of easy for you because this is kind of where where you you came from as well with your own church. Right. And so I guess another key piece to how I got to where I um, 
where I am and what I do is I went to a church and it was a ba- it's a Baptist church and we support the Baptists across Louisiana support Louisiana Baptist Children's Home and um, we support them monetarily um, with actual physical things and um, I realized that they had a needs list that was two pages long and it appalled honestly it appalled me I was like how do we have all these Baptist churches in Louisiana and we still have a needs list at our at our children's home and so we had a we had a women's group um, that st- stepped up and was like their biggest need I called and their biggest need was pillows, pillows. and so pillows of all things things. We have tons of them at my house, just everywhere. Um, and so we did a pillow drive. It was 10 women and we stat, we shoved them in my car. I mean, it was like pillows coming out the windows and we had to like deflate them. And I mean, the amount of pillows that we got and brought up there, I was so impressed, but me and my mother drove up there with, you know, tons of pillows just shoved in my car and we took a tour and I just fell in love with what they did um, and what they do. I mean, it's a fantastic organization. And I, and I just felt like we could do more. And so I always tell people, you're, we're not asking you. The ask isn't create something new. The ask is do what you do best, but do it for foster care. And so I was driving down the road. We had a meeting um, with, with everybody that morning. And I, it just occurred to me, I'm like, what do we do best? Like, what do women in the South do best? And I was like, we throw showers. <laughs> like, <laughs> we know how to throw a shower. We bring gifts. We eat cake. We eat dip. Like, that is what we do best. I mean, at least we do where I live. I mean, we <laughs> love a shower. So that's what we did. We threw a shower for all the other churches around us in our association. We sent out invitations. We sent out um, re- a re- like a list of things they can buy. And we had everybody over and we brought, they brought their gifts and um, brought gift cards. And we had the children's home come in and talk to us about that. And I tell you this because it's what we did best. We throw, we, we have a shower committee of essentially at the church, like people, we knew who did what, who brought what. And anytime we had a shower, we're like, I'll bring this. And it was just that simple and we do it for everybody. So why wouldn't we do it for the people we're supposed to support? And so it just that idea of you can do it, just do what you do best. I you love know? that. I love that. And that's a, that's such a comfortable way to, right. to 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 think about getting into this. Right, and you can eat cake. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's nothing better than that. That's right. That's right. And it it goes right along too with with what um, with what you know Scripture tells us to do, and and what you know yeah. giving giving back. Right, to care for the widows and orphans, and to you know that's it, in James it says true and undefiled religion is to care for the widows and orphans. And that is my heart. My heart is to care for um, ju- not just these kids, because we have mamas who need love too. You know, like we yes. need a support. The the support needs to be wrapped around everybody. These kids need the, the support, and they need to learn um, how to how to trust people again. These parents, they're coming from some systemic trauma. You know, most of these parents. Um, these bio parents, they've are, they've had trauma when they were little kids too, mm. and so they've not healed from that. So it's our. I feel like as a church, it's our job to lean into that and really be responsive to that, and offer them hope where they've never had hope before. Mm. You know, being a Christian is all about restoration, right? You know, we we can't do it our own. We need restoration, and that's what we need to offer to these families and these kids. Restoration. You, they can't do it on their own. You know, that's where we have to step in. I love that. I love that leaning in, leaning in. I love that. So, what is the the secret? Have you have you thought about that? The secret for getting people in involved. What do y'all? What do you tell people who ask? How can I? How can I help when they ask you, Louisiana Fosters? Well, I tell them that you, first off, if it's a church, I say, well, let's start, let's start at the bottom. What's the, what can you do? I'm not asking you 
right now to become a foster parent. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking what you can do for your your community outwards, you know, not inwards, but outwards. What can you do? Um, we tell them, I'll tell them, like, you can do, <clears throat> get when you come for a meeting, bring a gift card. Um, when you have Christmas exchange parties, instead of doing that, bring a gift card and donate it to an organization that's working directly with kids. Um, have a shower. I mean, collect shampoo, like all those things and baby diapers. I mean, we, I can just add now that I'm using Walmart online. Most people, a lot of people are just add an extra pack of diapers and you know, it's, it's all about just being aware. Yes. And I think when we when we step into that arena and we step into the church, which we taught um, going back a little bit to one church, um, one family, one child. It's all about seeing the need and meeting the need and mm-hmm. wrapping or getting the church to say, this is our this is our calling. This is where we need to be. We need to be in the middle of this. We don't need to be on the outside. We need to be getting dirty with this the, in the middle of this. We can't be scared of um, what we don't know. You know, we have to just know what we do know. We know that these ki- these families need hope. You know, and so just really inspiring them and saying, start at the bottom and work for work forward. We're creating a um, program with one church, one family, one child that helps do that. Mm-hmm. And says, here's it, like here is what you can have in your church to be able to start a foster care ministry. Because we have children's ministries, we have women's ministries, we have men's ministries, we have singles ministries, we have all these ministries. Um, but we don't a lot of times have a foster care ministry. And I think it's a great way for somebody, somebody to get plugged in and to, to pour into the community around them. How does Louisiana Fosters help with that? Um, help, help partners connect and, and, and if someone wants to get involved, how does it, how can, how can Louisiana Fosters help them connect and get involved? Right. So with, um, I think it's all about not recreating the wheel, right? And so we have put some really cool things together for people to to connect. Then one of the um, main things is we created a new website. Um, And that website is going to be a central hub for anybody and everybody across Louisiana that has anything to do with foster care. There's several things that are on the website that I just I think are vital to our this community. And the one is it says at the top of the website, when you scroll at the top, it says I am. It's just a simple sentence and you well not even a sentence. It's a phrase and you click it and it scrolls down and it tells you it asks you basically what you are. I am a pastor. I am a volunteer. I am a business owner. I am a, a foster family. I'm a kinship family. Like all those things are there and we can add mm-hmm. where we see when people, you know, if we have people that want that, we can add and keep adding information. They can click that and it's a direct um, way that they can help. It's just valuable. That part is so valuable and it's key because it, it, it releases anybody of the, of the, of the phrase, like, I don't know what to do because you can click I am and it brings you to a page where it says, here's some things you can do. Yeah. You're trying to, you're helping, you're helping them out. I'm right? just helping you. <laughs> right. And that's, and that is going to evolve and grow yeah. and get bigger. And, um, we just think, I, I personally feel that that's going to be one, mm. something that's really utilized. Mm-hmm. The second thing we have, um, is going to be fantastic for our foster families and it's an interactive map and it it's broken up into regions and all of your support organizations and all of our partners are on it and so they can click it and click their contact information and they can directly contact those organizations and benefit from what these organizations offer their statewide organizations and then there's regional organizations and that's an ever-growing list as well and the third thing i think is um that's going to be super helpful is for our partners. Um, it is a calendar, and the cal- they can put their events on the ca- on the calendar. Um, anytime they have uh, recruitments, anytime they have fundraisers, anytime they have it, we ask that they fill out that calendar form so we can put that up on the website so everybody's aware of what you're doing. And so we really have tried to hit the website from ev- some yeah. just an individual who doesn't know what to do to our foster families 
to our um, partners. And, um, and so we're really trying to hit it from very different areas. So everyone has a, a space, right? We want everyone to feel welcomed in this space. And so that is the whole idea behind the website. I would think your partners would be interested too. And, and potential partners mm -hmm. would also be able to use the interactive map to see what can, their kindred spirits are doing around the state. Yeah, absolutely. How to work together what other people are doing that, you know. And right, and that's the, one of the things is we don't, I say this a lot, but we don't want to re recreate the wheel. So if you're able to look at, look, you have this heart for, um, to collect items for, for kids. You know, if you look in your, your area and there's somebody already doing it, you can lock arms and make that mm. such a, a more fruitful organization. You know, we don't, we're not trying to, to recreate and make new things all the time. And there's a place for that and there's a space for that, absolutely. But we want you to work with the people around you who already have established their, um, their organizations to move forward and do good things. Well, what about people who want to be a partner, who are interested in becoming a partner? What do you suggest? How, how, what's the best way to become a partner? So um, we created an application on our website. Um, so it's really easy. Um, you just put all your information in it and it sends me a sweet little message and it tells me who you are <laughs> and how to get in touch with you and all of your information. And then um, we'll, we go to and we um, meet and we approve those and we put you on the website. How do I know if I'm like, what does a partner look like? So basically what that partnership looks like is that um, you get to be on our website. You get to advertise that you're partnering with the first lady and her initiatives, which is really cool. Um, and it, you, we, that communication between Louisiana Fosters and everybody else who's working together, it brings it together. And so what you want in an organization is you want to be able to connect with other people. It's all about connection. And it's just a connector point when we're doing this all together. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and if I'm, how do I know if I'm, you know, if I'm somebody who would be a likely partner, if I'm already doing work in foster care, yeah. should I consider myself? If you're an organization and you serve the um, foster care community, um, your partner material. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the thing we, we um, you know, if you're directly connected with foster care, that's who we want to be involved with. You know, we want to put you on our website. We want to tell everybody these are, this is what this, this church, this nonprofit, um, these group of women are doing. And this is how you can reach them and how they can meet your need. Because we really want it, um, those partners to be able to um, meet the needs in their area. You know, and so when we put them on there, they can do that more effectively. Oh, that's great. So it sounds like you have a, a lot going on right now. Yeah. What are, your, what, what, what are your plans? What are your hopes for the future? So um, we, were in, we wanted to launch a bus tour, like go around the state, rally everybody up. And, and we, were, we, were, we were gonna do it but we are going to do it. Um, it's just not going to be at the moment. Right now we're going to um, recruit churches after, um, and we're going to visit those churches via Zoom um, and talk to them about what they can do to start a foster care ministry and what they're doing already. Mm -hmm. And so and the first lady is going to be involved. She, she wants to meet with these churches to really rally around this cause and say, it's your job. It's my job. It's your job. It's our job to be involved. And so to really just, um, you know, connection is best made in person, but it's also been really good to have Zoom, you know? Yeah. So we're really trying to connect um, on a deeper level. And, you know, we can put it out on social media and we can put it out in our blogs and we can do all this. But until we talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, and they understand the heart behind this. They don't grasp it, I feel like. Yeah. And so that's the whole point of what we're about to launch um, is the one church, one family, one child, um, zooming into your community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like that. We're excited about it. Well, we've been so fortunate to have the First Lady as an advocate She's for our children. Yeah. And um, I mean, not everybody, not every state has that. No. We've been so fortunate to have her um, for four and a half years. We'll have her for another three and a half, and it's just yeah. wonderful. 
um, to have. And she she's adapted very well to uh, to to Zoom. She has and uh, to Facebook Live mm -hmm. and everything else. Right? She reads books on a regular basis and everything else. So she does. I imagine we'll be seeing a lot, you know, seeing her that way. I mean, this, you know, um, in lots of forms. Yes, a lot. There's several things coming up that I, um, we're really trying to figure out what the, because, you know, it's all about, and there's nothing new. There's nothing everything has to be created right now from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. Cause everything's been out the window, um, going out the window, um, which is kind of beautiful because it just makes you look through it through different yeah. lenses. You know, you have to be creative, you have to be innovative. Um, and our reach, I, I feel like our reach at this point can be a lot more significant. Uh -huh. Um, cause we can be direct with people and we can talk direct to people, but right. we don't have to like travel three hours to their church right now. Well, that's you true. Know? That is true. So that's the, that's the really cool thing. I think it, um, about these zoom meetings is that we can reach so many more people than we thought we were going, you know, than we even thought possible. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Thank you so much, Katie. Yeah. Is there, I, I don't know, is there anything else that you wanted to, to add about what you're doing? And No, I'm just so grateful to be doing it. Every day I, I wake up and I don't know how, I don't know how I got this lucky. Well, thank yeah. you for, for, for all of your, your service and your ideas, which seem to keep coming and coming. Yeah. And we'll take them, we'll take them all. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.